Ryan, how long have we known each other now? Uh, going on three years, I think. Yeah, I think it's been about three years. It feels like a lifetime. <laughs> when you and I met, did you think that you were going to have the opportunity to have a romantic UK tour with me? <laughs> Not this soon. <laughs> Not this soon. <laughs> oh, I didn't wine and dine you long enough. Okay. <laughs> No, uh, United Kingdom, you know, <laughs> training tour. How freaking awesome is that? It is pretty awesome. No, we're very excited uh, as Trained by Text to be able to partner uh, with Elite Diagnostic Solutions. Thank you so much, Ryan, with Elite Diagnostic Solutions, yes. of course, for giving us the opportunity to come over and, uh, and uh, really enjoy ourselves over there. We're going to have a great time, and we hope you guys join us. I think we all have a great time as well. Uh, we just want to make sure that um, whatever foods you guys ask us to try while we're there, maybe don't tell us what's in them. <laughs> yeah, no ingredients. I think, <laughs> no ingredients of the haggis. I think is the one one of the ones that was uh, brought up. Uh, and then somebody said rule number one with eating foods in Scotland is not don't the ingredients. The ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very, very excited about this, uh, Brian, um, and I, uh, we're looking, definitely looking forward to it. We know we're going to have a good time, and uh, we look forward to meeting you guys, and uh, yeah, register, come to class. So the plan for this class is to have like a combination. There's going to be some lecture classroom time, there's also going to be some shop time, but the really cool thing about the lecture classroom time and the cool thing about this being a PicoScope class is, of course, you can run your Pico in demo mode. And, you know, when we're covering reference waveforms and, and viewports and manipulating uh, scope waveforms and using measurement tools and math channels and, and understanding deep measure, it's going to be, there's no better way to learn than when you're actually following along and doing these things with, you know, your Pico there, batteries charged, of course and following along in demo and actually doing this yourself. The other cool thing that we want to do is, yes, we want to try to do some pressure signature analysis, but what we're going to, you know, we have some really cool scope captures and we're going to kind of cover some um, faults that can occur and how it shows up on the scope capture. But also we're looking forward to actually having some shop time and being able to acquire some of these pressure signature uh, waveforms ourselves, uh, maybe even, uh, you know, give you guys an opportunity to diagnose uh, a waveform based off of a bugged demo or a vehicle or something like that. So um, we're really excited about it. And uh, we're going to take a quick moment and kind of cover some of these sections a little in a little more depth here. You know, what's really cool about this class, Brian, is the fact that you and I decided to make it customizable kind of on the spot, right? Depending on the experience level, because, uh, of course, Ryan's kind of making this a tour. I feel like a rock star touring around the UK. He's kind of made this a tour. So every location, the experience level might be a little bit different. So um, for that reason, we've made it to where we can go so many, in so many different directions and make sure that everybody that's attending the class gets the most out of it. Uh, but we wanted to kind of cover some of the bullet points of what uh, we wanted to make sure everybody took away from this class, uh, some of the stuff we're excited about. And the first one on our list is reference waveforms. Reference waveforms, uh, the big question there at the top is a good one. It's, I think it's key. Why would you use one? Well, when you're lab scoping a vehicle, um, often you'll find yourself... Uh, struggling to determine if what you're looking at is a broken car or maybe something that you're not familiar with. So the easiest way would be to compare to a known good. And in my personal opinion, one easy way to compare to a known good is by loading that known good into the current file that you have. And that is what a reference waveform is. Cool. Now, so like as opposed to just bouncing between your scope file and somebody else's scope file, you use this reference waveform, just makes it easier to kind of interpret, you know, whether you're dealing with, you know, whether your scope capture is in fact, you know, the, caused by the fault or if it's, you know, kind of matching the known good and you have to move on to the next step, right? Yeah, moving on to the next step. Uh, how do I create one? Come to class. And how do I upload one? 
We look forward to seeing your class. All right, the second topic of our class is viewports. Now, what is a viewport? A uh, viewport is uh, the ability to look at your capture in multiple ways. If you notice here at the top left, we have four channels on one viewport. And if you look at all the other viewports that we have, we have those same channels zoomed in on totally different uh, zoom rates. And each one of those represents a different way to look at the same thing. One of my favorite things to do with a viewport is a dual time base. That's that's pretty awesome. You know, I, I yeah, I don't even know. I'm kind of speechless. You know, <laughs> <laughs> to be able to use your Pico scope in a dual time based manner, um, there are so many different scenarios um, that this could be helpful. It's pretty incredible. So, how do you do it? Come to class. I'll show you how. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Join us if you haven't gotten a hint. <laughs> so obviously we have this section here we're going to be talking about using frequency math channels and deep measure to identify signal dropouts. So this is a section kind of designated for very specific faults uh, and we're going to cover the two. But what's really cool is that PicoScope gives you these awesome tools to be able to to, to find really specific and odd faults and math channel gets math channels gets I mean there's just so much you can do with math channels in fact Brian what are some of the things we can do with math channels honestly the sky's the limit and uh, to find out more you gotta come to class gotta come to class 